What makes music music? There's a pattern of notes that work together in a sequence that create something that's melodical, something that we listen to and we enjoy listening to and it makes sense to us. I could take a bunch of letters and throw them on a piece of paper and I, have I written a story? No, it's just a bunch of letters. It's organizing them and putting them in a way with a direction, with a goal that creates something meaningful. This is true for your morning routine. This is true for your evening routine, your food. It's especially true with your workouts. You can do a bunch of exercises, but all you're doing is a bunch of exercises. You're not, as Adam said, training your body. You're not moving in the direction that you can move. Nine out of 10 times when someone doesn't have a routine and they go to work out, they will navigate towards the stuff that they enjoy and they end up doing the same thing over and over. And there's so much you can derive from a workout in a short period of time. And again, here's what we're talking about, wasting time and being efficient. A routine that's effective will give you way more in 30 minutes than five hours of aimless exercises and random stuff. Hey, look, in this episode, we talk about the value of routines, why they will help you be more successful, burn more body fat, and build more muscle. So stay tuned. You're going to learn a lot about how to create successful routines for yourself. Also, here's the giveaway for today's episode, the RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. One of you guys or girls or whoever will win this. Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the RGB bundle. One more thing, we're running a sale right now on three MAPS programs in a bundle. MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere. All together would normally retail $361, but right now it's only $99.99 with the April sale, okay? So if you're interested, go to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the show. Most people's morning routines makes them weak, impulsive, and anxious. Ooh. Yeah. Are we going to take the counter on yeah. morning routines? Well, is that what you're going to do here? Well, what it is, is uh, really it's a lack of routine. But mm. what, well, here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. We're a creature habit, though. Y yes. So you have a lack of routine. What ends up happening is you end up creating a routine, but it's really based off of being impulsive, uh, being anxious, reactive, rather than uh, proactive. And if you talk to most people about their morning routine, you ask them, like, what's your morning routine? They're like, oh, well... I get up and then I go to the bathroom and then I check social media and then, you know, I kind of stumble around. I grab some coffee or some caffeine uh, and then I got to rush, get the yeah. kids ready. And what's happening is you're, 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 you're setting the stage to be reactive throughout the day. And, and there's a few reasons for this. One is the social media. You're getting on, you're looking at social, social media is almost always negative slanted, right? It's all mm. a bunch of fires and crazy stuff and Oh my God, Horrible you see what happened? News. Yeah, and so you're already in kind of this reactive, negative type of state of mind. You also fail to set your intention for the day and you're not really planning anything. So you kind of set the stage for this, you know, to react to impulsive feelings and to be reactive throughout the day. And one thing that's interesting, I was having this conversation with Jessica the other day because she goes, man, you always have the same routine in the morning. You have the same routine at night. You have this routine when you come home from work. And she goes, don't you feel like you're, <laughs> like you're stuck in this regiment? I said, the reality is it creates more freedom for me because uh, I have, I, I set the intention. It, it frees things up for me. And I know what I'm trying to get myself to feel like or be like with that routine. I get to plan it, you know, beforehand. It makes a big difference. Now, do you, do you think there is a hierarchy of what is more important as far as the routines? Because I agree that I think the routines are extremely valuable. Um, but there's lots of different types of routines for yeah. different goals. And so do you think that w some are more important than others? Do you think that's a, a, a general thing or do you think it's specific to the individual? I like, think it's pretty specific. It's like a workout routine, right? So if you were to ask like, what's the best workout routine, I'd have to ask, well, what's the person's goals? What are their fitness history? How much time can they devote to the gym? You know, all that stuff, right? Before right. I can give a good answer. I think you need to know what your goals are with the routine before you can s sit down. And now there's general stuff, right? So like getting some sunlight in the morning, we know that's kind of a good idea to set the circadian rhythm, for example. Uh, maybe not going on social media first thing. That's probably a good thing for most uh, for most people. So I think there's some general answers, but I do think that it's uh, much more individual. I think the key though is to plan it out. It's funny when you read about successful people I used to be kind of like, um, I, I used to kind of scoff at it a little bit like, oh, another billionaire telling us about his morning routine. <laughs> yeah. 
oh, another billionaire telling us about what he does right before he goes to bed. And it's competitive, like how early yes, do they get up in the morning. Yeah. I've, I swear to God, I've heard so many TED Talks on morning routines and like how to hack it and how to like <laughs> yeah. do Nobody talks about your your nighttime routine and getting better sleep. And then- That's another one. You know, and then also like the workouts and like what's going to carry you and, and uh, keep you successful in terms of like keeping your body uh, healthy and, and, and upkeeping that. So it's routines in general. We got to talk about all of them. Yeah, no, I know. And it's funny because most of us will have at least some routine that we plan out for something that we consider important. Like I've always had a workout routine or what I do before my work because I've always valued my workouts. And if you were to ask me, hey, Sal, get rid of all your routines and just we'll ring a bell and that means it's time to work out and you just got to get into your workout. Like that's terrible. That's going to be a terrible approach. I'm not going to get the same results. not going to feel the same. I need to set myself up um, and it made sense there. But if you had asked me when I was younger about a morning routine, I would have laughed like morning routine. What do you mean? I get up, I go to the bathroom, brush my teeth and I get out. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing. It's really setting the stage. And rather than scoffing, I had to kind of like check myself a little bit and go, you know, you're being a little arrogant. Here are all these very successful people and they all have this thing in common that they all have, uh, they all create these routines that they value. And there's some planning involved. Maybe there's something to be learned from these successful Well, it sounds people. like work always. And it always sounds like, you know, the, the whole discipline side of it, I think it deters people sometimes because they're like, well, now I got to add all these things. When in fact, it really just opens up more freedoms and more, once you get into these uh, disciplines, you really start uh, repeating them consistently. Dude. It just frees you up. So more. true. A big myth around routines is that they're restrictive. And that they actually take up time, that it's not freeing, that somehow being free means having zero structure and just kind of floating around. The opposite is actually true. It's actually more freeing to set the intention and, uh, you know, kind of have a bit of a plan. Now, this doesn't mean, and we'll get into this, this doesn't mean that you're so rigid that it decreases the quality of your life where you're like, we're going on vacation. Uh oh, I can't do my morning routine. Forget it. I'm not going to go or whatever, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. But a well-planned routine used appropriately actually increases or improves your freedom because it's super, it's time efficient and it makes you more effective, right? So if you're more effective, that means you spend less time doing the things that you're trying to do. It's like being more effective at work would mean that you can work less but get the same result, which increases your freedom, right? Gives you more time to do other things. So I'm really curious to hear, uh, including Doug, what you guys would consider your, because I'm, I'm, I'm listening and I'm you know, I don't know if I have a real morning routine. Um, I think I have some rules that I give myself, right? That I, I think I try and to to stick to stick to on a kid. So maybe that constitutes a, mm -hmm. a, a routine. I'm not sure. Um, I don't feel like I'm that rigid about it. But there's there's a handful of things that I think that are, are are valuable and to getting my day off to the right start. But I've never actually thought about it and go like, oh, this is I do this and then this and yeah. this is how, how how I structure it. And I get up at this time for sure. It's like there's a lot of flexibility. My my mornings are inconsistent with the times that I get up. Sometimes I'm up really early. Sometimes I'm up uh, not long before we have to get here. Um, but I'm curious to hear because I've never asked you guys what your morning routine looks like. I would think just based off of us being together for so long, you probably have the most regimen morning routine because you train in the morning. So yeah. that probably requires, and you also have the youngest child right now. So I'd imagine you probably have the the strictest routine. Um, Doug, you're pretty consistent with your mornings. Yes. Justin, what about you? What, what do you? Yeah, I have to plan ahead of time for my mornings because I'm I used to go on the just uh, chaotic. I don't have a lot of energy. My, my brain isn't completely fully working hundred percent. So I have to like plan it. So I have my clothes specifically laid out. I have to, um, hit sort of every beat. So that way I'm ahead of being late for getting the kids ready and, and helping out with, uh, getting the dogs fed and then getting them taken out. And so, I do have a lot of like things I have to accomplish before I'm, I'm out the door. And, and two, now I work with uh, the high school football team in the morning. So those, those mornings shift. So I got to get up earlier and do a completely different routine uh, to make sure I get ahead of it. But I set myself up ahead of time the night before 
uh, with a lot of different, um, like even lay out my toothbrush. Uh, you know, I have my, my <laughs> breakfast right. like out in the, in the kitchen ready to go. Like I have, I have a blender all set there. I've been making myself shakes. So I just, I have it ready. So all I got to do is hit a button <laughs> and like literally pour milk in. And that's just how my brain works. No, you, you, well, you just mentioned something that, okay. So here's something I do that I didn't, I guess I really didn't think that much about it, but I do remember it becoming like a hack was, uh, and as stupid as it may sound was, but just having my outfit for the next day picked out yeah. the night before. Cause I, what I caught myself doing, you remember was, that you remember figuring that out in school? That's what it was when I was in school. I figured that out. Like, oh, it's better to have my clothes laid out the night before. Than- well, otherwise you find yourself that morning thinking, Oh, I want to wear this. And then so a, a piece of the ensemble is missing. Like, yeah. Oh shit. I don't have the, or you the waste shorts the next 15 minutes. Oh, I, yeah, it's dirty or yeah. yeah, something's gone. So I, okay. So that, that's something that I, I do consistently. Uh, that makes a difference. I know that. And really for me, it was like shaving time. I'm always trying to be as, as efficient as I can in the morning because I want to get as much sleep as I can and sleep as close to the time that I have to get up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So and then I, and that I'm not rushed either, right? I don't yeah, want to get yeah. up and feel like I'm rushing rushing at all. Doug, what about you? Maybe you have some hacks that uh, I do also. Uh yeah, my my routine is fairly consistent, but it depends on the day, right? Every day is different. So some days I work out, I like to work out in the morning. So on those days, I do something a little bit different than the other days. Some days I have to take Brianna to school. And so I have to plan Do you have around. two different routines then when you work out versus when you take your daughter to school? Uh, yes. Well, if it's a worked out day, then I have to factor that in as well. Mm-hmm. So that means I'm going to take Brianna to school and then I want to come here directly after I drop her off at school because I don't want to have to go back home and then change or do anything else. I want to be ready to go here so I have enough time. Yeah. So yeah, I think the key with the morning routine before you create one is to is to just like with a workout routine is like okay, what's my goal? What am I working with? And then what is that? Then you can start to kind of plan it out, right? Mm-hmm. So for anybody watching, that would be the best way to set it up. Um, mine is very structured, Adam. And it, you're right, working out in the morning plays a big role in that. Plus, I have you know three kids, and so I'd have to figure all that stuff out. So what I did, and by the way, my morning routine now is something that's established and that I've actually planned out. It's the last type of routine that I really set up. I did, I set up a, a sleep routine way before I ever realized the morning routine was something that would make a lot of sense for me. So now I'm, I can lay it out for you now. It's like I wake up and I try to wake up at the same time every single day. And the reason why I do that, even on weekends, the reason why I do that is I was reading about um, jet lag and how, you know, when people travel and they go from one place to another, there's a two or three hour difference, which doesn't sound like a lot. It can take the body and the brain a, a, at least two or three days to adjust to the change in time. And then I read about how people give themselves jet lag every weekend. So it's like they wake up at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday come along and they go to bed three hours later and and try to sleep in. And then by, by the time Monday comes around, this is one of the reasons why people hate Monday so much. It's as if they're giving themselves jet lag. Well, I just adjusted my body to waking up at 8 a.m. Saturday and Sunday and going to bed much later. Now it's Monday. I got to go back to where I was before. And you end up losing two or three days because of productivity or sharpness or whatever due to that. So one thing I do now is no matter what, I wake up uh, about 5.30. So regardless of Monday through all the way through Sunday, I wake up at 5.30, which also means I go to bed right around the same time every single night. Now, this isn't super rigid. Obviously, if I'm with family or on vacation or something, then it's definitely worth it. Just like sometimes I'll eat pizza or drink a beer. But for the most part, I, I'm 5.30 no matter what. My alarm is set and then that's it. When I get up, I'll you know I'll go to the bathroom, of course. I'll go. Uh, I have my gym bag set up already, ready to go, and my clothes set aside. I get dressed. I go downstairs, and that's when I have my pre-workout supplements. So this is where I'll have my, if I'm taking a pre-workout, it's Legion Pulse, which has got caffeine in it. If it's not that, then I'll do the red juice from Organifi if I'm getting myself off caffeine. And I'll drink that. I'll, I'll get my water filled up. And then I drive to the gym, which takes me about 25 minutes. On the way there, I've been picking materials to listen to that get me to step outside of my life and look at everything from as uh, Arthur Brooks would say, 40,000 feet. So he made this recommendation. He said, you know, it's really important you have a practice, whether it's spiritual or not, where you actually look at everything from a 40,000 you know, foot view. And so right now I'm listening to C.S. Lewis book. Uh, but before that, I was listening to a book by Jordan Peterson. And so on the way to work out, I'm doing something that takes me out of that. And then I get to the gym 
Now it's workout time. Do my workout. And then on the way here, I open my sunroof because that's really the only time I get sunlight in the morning. Uh, otherwise, we're in this cave. I don't get any sun, right? And then I'll come over here. And so that's kind of sets my intention. And my intentions are to have a good workout, feel good, but really the main intention is to be good for the podcast. And so that's why I, I kind of organized it that way um, in that in that sense. So I would say, you know, what is your goal? Is it like set the tone for the day? Uh, what, are, what are the intentions? Do I want to be positive? Do I want to be aggressive? Do I want to be compassionate? Whatever your, your, your day is going to look like and then plan it accordingly and think to yourself, how can I set myself up to do these things that I want to do during that day. And then that would be, I guess, the best routine. So we have some, we have some things similar. Um, I, I, I listen to an audio book every single day and that is to, to feed my brain. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking the you Justin, on the way here. Every morning, yeah. Huh? The Justin hack of the, the clothes that's so I'm not anxious in the morning. So that's kind of like my be prepared in the morning. Yeah. So, so I'm not anxious. Uh, the second one is probably make sure that every morning I, you know, either, you know, kiss Katrina or go see Max. That puts me in a place of gratitude. Why I do all this, what, and it sets kind of the tone for the day. So I make sure uh, that I always do that. Um, and then feeding my brain, right? I want, and I want, and part of feeding my brain is listening to something that is going to make me sharper on the podcast or something I can learn about. Um, and what comes with that is staying off of social media, at least until I get here. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't really have this like structured time or, but those things are pretty, pretty consistent. And I, but and over time I've learned you how figured it, out that that works. how, why they're so important, yeah. right? Like if the, the whole thing of, you know, not being anxious in the morning. Well, one of the biggest hacks ever for me was like, as stupid as it may sound is having my clothes ready saved 15 to 20 minutes every single morning just because yeah. it was already handled. So yeah. I, I totally jump on board with that. I definitely think that social media is full of negative bullshit or us comparing ourselves to others. So I, if I'm going to take in anything, I want it to in enhance my life, to grow me, to make me smarter, to help me on the podcast, to make me sharper. So I'm going to ingest things that are like that growth focused. Yep. And then, uh, and then of course, seeing the wife and kids, I mean, that to me, making sure I, I that's, and that kind of, kind of comes from Jordan Peterson talking about how you end your day, how I end and start my day is the family thing, right? Is re remembering that like all this stuff that I do is, is for this. And so I think making sure that I, I start the day off like that, um, that's kind of how it looks, you know? Yeah. There's a few things I probably left out. There was, um, I used to sleep in pure darkness and I do sleep in pure darkness However, I've, I've started to uh, open up so I don't have blinds on one side of my room. Um, so that way I let the sun come in in the morning on top of having an alarm clock that's not super obnoxious because I used to have an alarm clock that was really loud. And when I would hear it, it would, it, it would make me uh, soup like it would just create a response within my body. So like, true. Like, like I was. I was uh, like in danger or something. Yeah. Like danger, yes. danger. Like my whole body would like would freak out. Uh, and I did not like waking up like that. And so I found this alarm clock that does emulate the sun and it kind of just has that, that natural kind of light. Dude, how big of a difference through. does that make? Huge. Isn't that crazy? huge for me? Because I have to be gentle about how I wake up in the morning. Well, dude. You, do, okay. So I don't want to mean to cut you off, but this is so important. Have you ever heard the sound that your alarm clock, the one that used to jolt you out of bed. Have you ever been awake during the day, heard that sound and had it? It still gives me the chills. It's, and you the get the PTSD same feeling. The alarm clock that it used to go yeah. out uh, 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 yeah. when Even I was a you kid. You just hear it now, right? Give, yeah, will give me the chills when I what hear it What does that today. tell you? You're funny. training a stress <laughs> response in your body. Isn't yes. that crazy? I remember yeah. that. That's why I got the same alarm clock because I would hear my that 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 the alarm sound that my phone would do and I would just be, I'll be awake already. But I'd get that, uh, you know, kind of feeling like, what am I doing to myself? Yeah. And that would just ruin the, like you're talking about setting the intent for the day. Like yes. I already feel like, ah, oh, like something like bad is going to happen. Like my, my adrenaline's like super high. And so I just really try to like eliminate a lot of the stress uh, in, in the beginning of the day. And so not looking on social media, not, you know, being concerned with uh, the world's problems right away, <laughs> at mm -hmm. least like give me the middle of the day where my, my brain can kind of like handle that kind of content. Uh, but yeah, like being able to do that and then, um, having like sort of a meditative 
start to the day, I think was a huge part of that. And I would take my coffee, which was already preset. And, and all I had to do is like hit a button or it would, would start, uh, if I had a, it on drip, it would already start. And I'd take it outside while the dogs were eating and just try and breathe in the air and get uh, oh, sunlight. Nice. So that was, that's, that's been like a huge, you know, start to my morning to keep everything sort of at a good, um, balance. Yeah. Do you guys ever track the amount of time you spend on your, does, you know how your phone tracks how much time you spend on yeah. your phone or on apps or whatever? You know what I found? This mm. is really crazy. If I start the day with social media, I use more of it during the day sure, than if I don't. If I start with good intentions, I'm less likely to, in, to impulsively check social media and want to see what's going on and, oh, this crazy thing's happening and what's today's what am I supposed to be enraged and pissed about today or whatever? Yeah. So I notice if I don't do it first thing in the morning, which now that's a big deal. Now I purposely do not check it as soon as I get up. I used to do it all the time. I'll check it. I end up using it less uh, throughout the day. That setting the intention is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's you're literally planning like, okay, how can I make myself be in the state of mind that I want for my day? And then literally just in a morning routine doesn't have to be like an hour long or right? It's literally, it could be 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I have 15 minutes before I got to get in the car. What am I going to do in that 15 minute period? This, this, and that. And that's it. And no, it just mine's, sets the mine's super short. That's why, that's why I'm not a big fan of like the people that try and, you know, brag about how early they get up and, you know, it's like this whole hour, two hour thing before they even start their, their real day or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. not me. I'm sleeping in as close as yeah. I can till the last minute I, I have enjoy to. enjoy sleep. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I, and I, it, but I, again, I have these few things that over years of obviously getting up and, and starting my day that I've put together that, oh, wow, this makes a huge difference. Yeah. And so, and they're all short. It, it takes me two seconds to walk in and kiss my wife and child and say something to them before I go off. Um, I'm literally drinking my coffee and listening to an audiobook on the drive on the way there. There's just, those things don't take a lot of time. It's setting the clothes out the day before a few minutes. like So it doesn't have to be, in my opinion, uh, this long, crazy drawn out like no. routine it can be just little hacks that i think make a big impact like, on how your day is like anything it's consistency right so if yeah. you set your you set a routine that's important that kind of works for you do it consistently is more important what do we say about workouts right you have a bad workout done consistently is better than a great workout done inconsistently it's the same thing with uh, a morning routine we've all been talking or mentioning sleep routines or evening routines i think that's something we all uh, have made a big deal around right mm -hmm. because i think we all saw a huge impact on preparing ourselves uh, for sleep. This is another important routine um, that I think we've all identified. I know all of us take it very seriously. I think it's more important. And I think part of why I was like not excited yeah. about this episode is because everybody talks about morning routines. And, 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 and yes, there's lots of plenty of research to support the benefits of, of having that. And we just went on and shared all of our stuff. But I think that where the magic is, is where most people aren't looking. And there's not a lot of people that have good sleep routines and we know how important good rest is for all the things that we talk about on the show all yeah. the time and i just don't think there's a lot of conversations around like taking that seriously i think it's like an afterthought when in reality i think it should be you i think you focus more on that and the other things will come together yeah and the sleep routine is part of the evening routine and i say evening routine because there's stuff that happens at night or that should happen or maybe i guess if you know what you want your day to end like and how to start the next day, mm -hmm. it's part of the evening routine. So again, you want to write down what your goals are. My goals with the evening routine are I want to have good, deep sleep. I want to tie up loose ends. One of the worst things that could, for me at least, with sleep is if I feel like there's, like I didn't close a loop, right? And it ends up spinning in my head. Like whether it's an argument I didn't finish with my wife or something that, you know, we didn't deal with at work or I wasn't able to write it down so I could forget it type of deal. That'll really mess me up. So I'm like, okay, I want to have good sleep and I want to feel like the day is ended. And I also want to set myself up for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I want to have tomorrow set up as well. So that's all part of the evening routine. So I'll go through some of mine. I'd love to hear your, your guys' stuff. One of mine is, and we've I've talked about this often many times, uh, is about an hour before we make the house dark. So we turn the lights off. We go by, uh, candlelight would be great, but typically we use salt lamps. It's, you know, obviously not, you don't have to keep buying candles or whatever. It's, so it's much darker or I'll wear blue light blocking glasses. And that's just to tell my brain, Hey, we're going to be ready for sleep here in about an hour. I'll get my food set up for the next day. So, um, and we'll get into that a little later, but I like to have my food set up. So I know what I'm having for lunch and for maybe, you know, mid afternoon meal. 
So that's ready in the fridge. I'll make sure I have my, I talked earlier about how I'll have my supplements for my pre-workout. I'll have that set aside. So when I get up, I'm ready to go. I have everything I want. I'll have my gym bag put together. That's also part of my evening routine. I also added this. This is a big one. And uh, you guys, well, maybe you soon, Justin, will, will start to realize this. My older kids now are basically teenagers. And one of the things about teenagers is they don't want to hang out with you anymore. Mm. They just don't. It's like yep. you, you come home, they're gone. They're in the room. They're talking to their friends. They're texting or whatever. And the only time I get to see them is dinner time. So I make a big deal about everybody here, dinner time, same time. Yep. Other than that, it's like, hey, you guys want to watch a movie? Nah. Hey, you guys want? Nah. So I'm like, man, I don't ever see my kids. So I added this new evening routine. And this is, uh, you know, all this goes to my wife. So it's a great suggestion. She said, you know, before we go, you know, put the baby down and or right after we put the baby down, you and I are about to hang out. Let's go in the room, say goodnight, and then let's sit there for 10 minutes and just kind of hang out for a second. So now I spend about seven to 10 minutes with each of my older kids in the room after I say goodnight to them. Like, oh, hey, we're going to go upstairs. We're going to watch TV. We put the baby down. Good night. And then I'll just hang out in there. And you know what happens? They start to talk to you a little bit. It's kind of cool. So yeah. now I'm starting to do that. So that's part of the evening routine. Uh, and then, and then once I do all that, we're ready to go to sleep. We go to sleep. I get way better sleep and I'm set up. My intentions now are ready to be set for the following day. What do you got? Do you guys do anything different or? No, it's similar. I have made, um, a similar attempt at that, especially with, you know, Ethan getting older now, he is like just kind of taking off and doing his own thing in his room. Um, and I definitely still read to Everett. And so that's part of the routine is we, we pick up a new book and we start the chapters off and he loves, he loves to interact and read and I have him read to me sometimes. Sometimes I read to him and then I go from him to then Ethan. And then what I do with Ethan is I pick either, I just pick a topic about school, what's happening. I want to be informed with his friends. Like what are his friends doing? Like, um, you know, what, how's band going? Like how, like whatever the topic is, I want to just stick with that one thing and just ask him about that and just see how, however long that goes. But I just want to spend that time to, to catch up and, and be uh, involved in terms of like what's happening in his life. And then, and really that's it because he's like, okay, dad, like he's trying to push me out, yeah. you know, already, Too which cool. is fine. But uh, <laughs> it's, so uh, it doesn't take a whole lot for him to go to sleep anymore. But uh, yeah, so I'll do that. And then, like you said, start dimming the lights down a bit. Uh, Courtney and I spend time together and that's, that's, we're very much night people. And so it's, it's not, we don't go to bed very early, but we definitely keep it very low. Uh, stress and, and we're just, we're just really trying to, uh, we try to do better about talking and, and not like interrupting that always with TV, but we do tend to like veg out some nights with that. But I mean, I do, if, if I felt like we're not doing well in, in terms of interaction, we'll just cut that off. But look, we need to just talk and like sit here and chat and catch up. Uh, and so we do that and then I'll go in and, uh, sometimes I'll take mellow if, um, it, you know, if my sleep has been iffy, uh, it does help quite a bit, calm me down. Um, and then I will, you know, do my whole thing before we go to sleep. I'll get the, the dogs out and then I'll journal actually. And I started just implementing this, uh, well, three things, deal. three things to, to, um, reflect on in terms of uh, what I'm grateful for. And so that's, that's when did you start doing that? That's interesting. Uh, I started doing that a couple months ago. What have you found from doing that? Cause that's a really interesting. Yeah. It just helps you to, um, reflect on more positive things, which then kind of stops that negative feedback loop where you're spinning about your day and about things that didn't go right or, or problems, um, bigger problems that you really shouldn't be concerned with or things in other parts of the country or politics, whatever the hell it is. Uh, it, it, it's just bringing it back to what's going really well and, and, or, or what, um, I, I want to focus on more about like the family dynamic and like, what's really positive there, or, like where I am. And like, <laughs> so anyways, just trying to kind of pull it back into more of, of a positive, uh, to end the day because everything you could get so caught up in all of these different, uh, opinions and things going on throughout the day that can lead you in a negative thought process. So that has been helping because then I'm not as, uh, you know, sympathetic and, 
you know, in, 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 and really like, you know, carrying that stress into sleep, which interrupts my sleep. And I've noticed that. And then, um, you know, staying ahead of making sure I eat uh, a couple hours, like two I hours to say that. Same here. before, because yes. I do have like digestive stuff I have to account for. What, so you cut it off at what? Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. typically, yeah. Right there. I'm otherwise, 630. 630, no food after yeah, that. Yeah. Otherwise it's, it's heartburn and it's all these different things I'm battling. So, you know, that's, that's definitely a, a, a big consideration I have to have and then making sure I'm hydrated. I, I wish that I I could stay consistent with the journaling thing. I've done. I I must have at least seven or eight uh, journal books that I have started at, in my house. That you know I, I'm good for a couple of weeks, and then and then I I fall off of it. I'm not very good for some reason. It's never been able. I've never been able to build like real good consistency. But um, what I did do was I've I've taken away like what is it doing and how's it impact my life, and then how do I build it in? And I started doing this not long after. Um, uh, we heard the Jordan Peterson with uh, Joe Rogan interview. So I look at it like we have our morning routine. I have my workout routine. And then my evening routine isn't necessarily the beginning of the evening because it sometimes starts at three o'clock or four o'clock if I get home early. Right. So really, I look at my you know evening routine as when I my transition from you, know, you have morning you transition into work, then you transition oh, yeah. into workout, then you transition into home life. It's like the last third of the exactly. day. Or whatever. So I look at it like maybe not so much evening because it could be two o'clock if we get home early then that's i'm now transitioning to the the next phase of my day and i i found that advice that he gave on that episode was like life-changing for me so and i actually take what you're doing at nighttime and that's actually when i do this so i'll be driving home and you know i have an, a, a good commute and when I get in the driveway, I actually turn the car off and I sit there for a minute. I actually just sit in my driveway and I don't go anywhere. And at that point is where I'm I'm doing like a, a gratitude exercise. So I'm decompressing from all the, a lot of times I'm working while I'm driving, I'm on phone calls, making business deals, doing shit like that. Uh, sometimes they're positive and good, sometimes they're not, you know? And so I try and separate myself from all the work energy and and detach for a second from all that and then and the way i do that is by getting my place in in what, what i'm grateful for like i'm so blessed I, I live here and i have a beautiful child and wife and like so i start doing that before i walk in the door that always sets the tone for how i interact with katrina from the minute mm -hmm. I come adam in. you have mm -hmm. to say this is this is such a big deal because uh, i was like you i saw i heard what he said and i was like this makes a big difference Talk about the difference between doing that and what you used to do, which is what everybody does, where you you just walk in after doing business. Yeah, well, what hit me was if you haven't seen the the Joe Rogan and and um, Jordan Peterson conversation, he's talking about how we, you know, we we plan for like vacations a year in advance and hours and hours of planning where we're going to go, where we're going to eat, what hotels we're going to stay, all for this, you know, seven days of your life. Yet you come home and you interact with your spouse every single day, yeah. you know, consistently for years, decades, your basically your whole life. And the amount of time that adds up to is like way more than a week, right? Totally. Some, probably years worth of minutes all compounded. And yet we put no effort into how you how you do that. Totally. And so that just kind of reframed the way I look at that. Like God, I've never really thought about like trying to put a practice in or think about tra the transition from work into coming home. You know, it's like you just, I think people just allow it to happen to themselves. And when you have a good day at work, well, your night with your wife or spouse is normally good because you're happy because things went well. And then a lot of times when that stuff isn't going well, it bleeds over. That. I mean, how many, I'm, how many couples have heard like, oh, I bet you had a great day today or, oh, yeah. what happened to you? Right. Like the, the spouse saying to the, and like, I wanted to eliminate that. Like I, I, I want to be able to come home and still, have a, a a good night, even if my day was fucking upside down and terrible. And, you know, if I don't set something like that, like that, that separates the, those, those two times, they, they'll, they'll bleed into each other. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, it it's, it's allowed me to on the day. And that's when it's most important on the bad days. On like good days, it's like not that hard. <laughs> we just had a huge win. Everything went great yeah. at work. We we're high-fiving. Yeah. I walk in the door skipping and it, it's fine, but it's, that's not for those days. It's for the days where I just got off a rough phone call. We we lost money in something. I'm frustrated, and I'm you know I'm I'm even the way I'm putting the truck in gear before I get out. I'm like oh my god, like stop for a second, take a deep breath. You know, mm -hmm. I'll sit there, do like a gratitude exercise, and then I walk in the door. So that's a, a, an evening, I guess, practice that I put in place for me. I have a two and a half year old, so. Um, 
I, I want to be a very consistent father with with the time that I spend with him. And so literally I come in the house, kiss Katrina, smile, tell her something positive, whatever, go straight to the bathroom, wash my hands, go to the bathroom. And then I go right to max. And then I spend, you know, an hour, two hours, sometimes more. Uh, and that's my time to play with him. We're normally wrestling, we're reading, we're building, we're playing, we're doing things together, teaching, whatever. Um, but that's very, very uh, consistent for me. Um, and then the the part that is uh, probably flexible, but we we have somewhat of a routine is after we put Max down, uh, we either are watching television together um, or we're sitting in silence. I love to. I think we brought up the the table to topics game. We actually oh, that brought that back lot, out the other yeah. day when we brought it up. Like uh -huh. sometimes Katrina and I, because sometimes it's like if you've been consistently watching your binging series and stuff like that, and you decide you want to interrupt that and have dialogue to just like interrupt that is weird. So a nice <laughs> transition is like, hey, let's pull that table topics game out, and then we'll pull it out. And once the first one's out and the conversation's going, we started using that too. By the it's way. great. It's a yeah. great. I think it's. I think it's such a great ex for someone who's trying to build this into their life, and they're like, "Where do I start? Or this is weird. Like, I don't want to make a big deal about sitting down and talking to my spouse." It's like, okay, well then, just pull the pull the card out. You know what I'm saying, and just and just a subject. Yeah, exactly, and just let it go, and then it'll it'll normally have dialogue. It's stuff so. like uh, like if you would never get caught, what crime would you do, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. they're they're mm -hmm. they're really they're really interesting conversations. That you know, I mean, Katrina and I have been together for almost 13 years, and. You know, there always when we do that, a, a new story that I've never heard mm -hmm. her tell about her childhood comes out, or some a, a view that she has on something that I didn't know that that's how she viewed things. Like so, it just it, it creates great dialogue. Or if we will do an audio book together, so that's kind of like what that looks like. But and then as far as like preparing myself for good sleep, um, I've become very consistent. <laughs> Once I went from mocking things like uh, blue blockers, I've now become somebody who's fully adopted them. Um, I have several pairs that I keep throughout the house, so there's never an excuse why I can't get grab one or, or one of them. And as soon as like the sun's starting to go down, I just Im immediately put them on, uh, just because I know I'll be on and off my phone. I know I'll probably be watching TV. I know I got fluorescent lights on in my house, so that's become a, a consistent habit. Um, very similar to you guys, I try and uh, limit to none if I can snacking past like eight o'clock or so. Like after I'm done with dinner, I try and try and shut it down uh, completely. I've now become very, very consistent with uh, mellow uh, right before I go to bed. I mean, it's been a huge uh, supplement for me. Obviously, I was probably deficient in magnesium. Um, and then like no phones in bed, like Katrina. So a, a, a rule. So again, I'm more of like we have these rules that we give ourselves, right? Uh, we, we don't have television in the room. That's like, that was like her thing that she's been consistent with. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that they've, uh, done on, on television in the room and how it affects sex life and sleep and stuff like that. And so that's been a consistent rule of ours that we just know television in the bed. If you want to watch TV, stay up late. I don't care. But when we come to our room, that's for sleeping and sex. That's what that, yeah. that place is for. Something you do too, that you didn't mention, and I'm sure you just forgot that you maintain is very sacred to you, Adam, because you've done this when we're on business trips, you'll actually leave to do this because it's part of your evening routine and it's sacred to you is to read to your oh, son. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that, that's- You read no matter where you are. It's like, we'll have a meeting. We're at work. We're off doing something and he'll be like, you, you'll disappear. What are you doing? What's he doing? He's reading to his son yeah. through FaceTime. Yeah, that's been- And that really is about, um, you know, I, 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 I didn't really pick up reading until my mid-20s. Obviously, I read through school like everybody did, but as soon as I was done with school, I was done reading. Um, and then it, when I was about 25, I, I uh, began reading more consistently and it was obviously very impactful. Uh, and so I, I want to implement that into my son's life. And I know better than to just tell my son he needs to read. I, I, I need to do it with him. And so and I believe that stuff starts those those things start even at the, his age mm -hmm. that he is now. In fact, I used to read to Katrina out loud when he was in her belly. So we've been consistent with it since she was pregnant. And then That's great. since then, I've just, it's just become a habit and routine and that, and I hope that when he starts to get to your guys' kids age, that we have stayed so consistent with that, that becomes kind of a family time. Everybody can go read whatever they want, or maybe we read together. Who knows what it looks like, but that I've, I've built that into his routine, that it's something that he looks forward to and consistently does. And we try and make it fun too. I don't want to make it like, this is educational only, son, mm -hmm. you know, where I- No, he enjoys it. Yeah, yeah. It's something that- I he, bet if you stopped, he would know what to oh, do. Oh yeah, no. I mean, he's, it, it's so regimen that we, we if, even if we're out somewhere else, we're at a hotel or anything like that, we still do that routine. We yeah. still get the books out and read before. I think it really helps calm him down before bed. I think that's part of why he's such a great sleeper is I think we do all those, those little steps before. It so. sets him up. You know, it's funny that they teach you when you're, when you have a little kid and you have, and they're having sleep issues. What do they always teach you to do? 
do like a routine before bed. And what do they always say? Like, oh, turn the lights down, put lotion on them or whatever, like massage them, put on their little pajamas. And then they know their brain and their body knows I'm, it's time for bed. And so mm-hmm. now it's time to chill out. Yeah. Imagine taking a little kid who's playing all excited and then put him in bed. Good night. Like, but we do that to ourselves. I think it's important to contrast what we just said to what a lot of people do, which is they go, 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 go. Oh crap. It's uh, 11 o'clock. Turn the lights out. And then you expect your brain and body to go into this parasympathetic recovery sleep process. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I go to sleep just fine. No, it's because you're so exhausted yeah. because your sleep is so bad. That is not the same thing. That's like, you know, that's like being so starving that you just feed yourself versus planning it out, which takes us to another one, which is a food routine. By the way, I want to make a comment here. When you're creating your routine, create the routine that you want when you're not in the middle of needing to do it. Don't create your sleep routine or night routine in at night. Right. Don't grocery shop when you're hungry. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> it's like the same advice. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like here, here's one that everybody will get. Don't create your workout routine while you're, while you're about to work out. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you're more likely to pick the stuff you want to do and avoid the stuff you don't want to do, right? Write your workout routine for tomorrow or the day after when you're, you're outside of it and you're more logical and smart and be like, I need to do mobility. So I'm going to put that in my routine. And yeah, I probably shouldn't deadlift because I've been doing that too much and it's hurting my back a little bit or whatever. I need to work on this you know, flexibility. So create those routines when you're not doing the routine itself or we don't need to do it. It's an important thing. All right, let's talk about food routine. This was a, this one I understood early on as a trainer because even as an early trainer, I understood the importance of nutrition. And I knew that a big reason why my clients would eat poorly was because they didn't plan anything. Yeah. They would, in the morning, I'm in a rush, grab something fast. So it was something frozen or on the way to work at the Starbucks or whatever, you know, caught their eye or skipped altogether. And then lunch comes around and it's like, what did they bring in the office or what's nearby or what do I feel like eating? And then dinner, very similar. Oh, on the way home, I didn't prepare anything. I have nothing to cook or nothing ready to go. So I think I'll stop by the drive through or whatever. And so a huge, very effective strategy I used to tell my clients was, hey, plan your meals the, the, the day before. So just literally set aside what you want for breakfast. And again, you're doing the routine before you need it, right? So the day before, you'd be like, well, what should I eat tomorrow for breakfast? Eh, probably not a frozen waffle. I'm going to set aside some, some eggs, maybe a glass of milk or some coffee. What am I have for lunch? Let me prepare that now. Now you have your lunch with you. Like, what is the intention of creating a, a food routine? You're less likely to act impulsively. Mm-hmm. You're less likely to eat foods that feed your impulse and more likely to eat foods that feed your physical body or feed your health right? It also allows you to eat on a schedule. How many times have you had a client who, you know, oh, it's three o'clock. Oh my God. I didn't have food for lunch, so I couldn't eat, but then I got busy. And then, oh, now I got a break at three o'clock. I'm starving. Now I'm going to go and eat, you know, whatever garbage I can get my hands on. Food routines are really, really important. And, um, this one I am pretty good at right now, but I go through periods where I don't, I'm not super good with it. Wow. The difference. Oh, it's, I mean, I think that the biggest difference between me looking aesthetically like I do right now compared to what I looked like just three, four years ago competing and stuff like that is that part. So uh, luckily we've been doing this for a very long time that um, I can intuitively eat and keep myself relatively fit and healthy always. It's not hard for me. I know, I mean, I've measured and weighed food for so long that I can eyeball something and know when I'm eating outside the boundaries or when I'm not, right? But setting myself up for success to like for a goal. Like if I want to reduce body fat or build muscle and like I want to do it in a short period of time, uh, the number one thing was planning food. And we used to, in fact, it was, I mean, for four years there, uh, we were so regimented about that, that it was like, that was all Sunday was about. Sunday was about going and getting all the groceries that we needed for the entire week. I was normally on the grill. Katrina was preparing all like the carbs or veggies and stuff that would go with all the meals. And we were tough wearing it out. And I mean, and when you do that, um, it's so much easier not to make bad choices. And it doesn't mean you have to do that to be really su- successful. But I mean, we're, we're all guilty of, you know, waiting too long to eat at one period or, you know, doing something that we're familiar to and, and the cravings start kicking in. And now not only do you have to be disciplined about making the right choice, but now you also have to fight this craving yeah. off. And yeah. it's just by by planning it all out and eliminating those excuses that I don't have something ready for me to go, it just makes it that much easier to be successful. So not that I think that you have to be that way, but boy, if you're somebody who's listening right now, 
and you really struggle or you're not consistent with your weight loss journey or muscle building, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to change and you haven't made the food routine or you haven't ever made like a day of like, this is when I grocery shop. This is when I prep. This is when I think about what I'm going to eat for the whole week. Like it's dude night and day. Difference. You know, what's a big one about this as a dad, uh, you know, I have I got three kids and I got to, you know, you got to pay your rent or your mortgage. And so you start, you worry about things differently than when you're in your twenties, you don't really care about this kind of stuff. But now that I'm older, budget is a big deal, right? You got to look at how much I'm spending and whatever. F food prep or food routine saves a ton of money, a mm -hmm. ton of money. Like yeah. going to the grocery store and buying stuff. Yeah, it's you're healthier, you're more fit, you eat you know better for your body, you have more energy. You also save a ton of money. Like if you if you just like are you don't plan and you're like, well, I'll just grab lunch, I'll just grab dinner, I'll just grab. You spend thou not a little bit more, thousands of dollars more. And that's something I didn't even think about when I was younger. But that was always the biggest pull for us. I mean, uh, I was better at uh, doling that advice to clients. <laughs> and I uh, was very good about that and helping them through that. And then, you know, I, I go back and forth about being flexible and intuitively eating. And um, really, for me, I, I would always get behind when it came to eating breakfast. And so that was something I had to get ahead of that and really plan uh, the night before, like how I was going to be able to do that. Because otherwise, it was just a super quick option or nothing at all. Uh, I would go way too long without ever eating breakfast, which then, you know, started to affect me negatively in terms of metabolism and just how my body was responding. So um, this is something that uh, has now the intent for me, like getting ahead of that and planning it uh, really helps uh, for the rest of my day in terms of like how I'm making choices and eating as well. Uh, it's that that effect that kind of carries with you throughout the rest totally. of the day. Totally. The other thing too is when you have, here's the other thing I noted again, and we'll get into this when it's going off a routine because you, you, it, routines are there to make life better, not make life worse. So you can make anything, anything can be so obsessive that it can be worse. But I love having food ready. I prepped it the day before. And then somebody says, Hey, you want to grab lunch? Now I have two options. Yeah. I'm not stuck in a position where I don't have food. If I don't go to lunch and I'm starving, I'm going to go with it. I can say, yeah, I'll eat the food that I made. It's better. It's healthier. Or I could be like, yeah, actually, you know what? I'll save that. And I'll eat that meal later or tomorrow. Let's go enjoy some lunch. I think it's so paramount to your success that I would use that a client that would tell me that they really, really wanted to change, or they really, really wanted to lose weight the bad, and they couldn't they couldn't put this together to me. I would, I would put it back on them and be, you're not that serious. If you're not willing just to plan out, you know, which it, it literally it takes a, you got to go grocery shopping anyways. You got to make, you got to yeah. eat. So it's not like you're really going way out of your way. You're really, all you're saying is that, Hey, for a day, I'm going to really care about this mm -hmm. and set myself up for success for a week. And so if you're sitting here telling me when I see you on, you know, Monday for your workout that you didn't do any of that, but yet you care really bad and you really, really want to lose the weight. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't want it that bad. Not if you're if you're not willing to spend a little time on setting yourself up for success. When I'm trying to tell you that uh, this is probably one of the single most important things you can do for success when it comes to macros and calories and figuring all that yeah. out. While we're learning all this stuff, and you're not willing to do that, then you don't really want it that bad. Plus, plus, there's a huge myth that that meal prepping or food routine or preparing my food takes more time. Here's the myth. Number one, it actually saves time for two reasons. One, thinking about what I need to eat, waiting in line, waiting for the food. That takes saves, up a lot of time too. way more time. And here's a, here's a statement that is true. Time is money. Mm -hmm. Time is money. If you're spending hundreds or thousands, in my case, dollars more because you're eating out all the time, could I use that saved money to buy me time in other ways that's far more valuable? Absolutely. It's like when people say, Oh, you know, working out takes up a lot of time and, uh, you know, I don't like to, how much you're actually adding time to the, to the hourglass because you're going to live longer and you're mm -hmm. more efficient. And they've done studies on, on companies that invest in fitness for their employees, employees that take an hour of the workday out to work out are more productive than people that don't take that hour out. In other words, they produce more for the company in less time because they're fit and healthy. So it's an illusion that taking time aside to prepare your food actually takes up more time. It no. actually saves you time. Say, wait, it's not even close to cook, uh, you know, 
six cups of rice and 20 pieces of barbecue chicken in one shot is much easier than doing that five times oh, throughout the week, yeah. two chicken breasts at a time or two, whatever you're eating. That's right? true. That takes way more time to do that. So, and I, I think people overcomplicate it. Like that, they think of like this. They think of the meal they want, and they're like, "Okay, well, that's one meal." But I need to think of. It's like no, just things like yeah. rice are great. You can huge thing of rice. I always do, and then a bunch of chicken thighs or a bunch of steak, and I cook it on a little bit on the rare side because I know I'm going to have to heat it back up or throw it back on the grill, or the oven real quick. So I want to cook it a little bit, and then I just have all this meat and all this rice, and then the veggies I can either eat raw and fresh or cook veggies up really yeah, quick so you could steam them that day. Well, so that's even easy. for us, like we, we figured out that if we can plan the week by like what protein that we were highlighting. So if it was like, uh, you know, kind of a steak or it was a chicken or it was a ground meat or whatever it was, like we would build the meal around that, especially for dinner. And so it was like having that planned throughout the week and available uh, made that so much better for us uh, just in terms of like the chaos that happens, especially at the end of the day. Yeah. And by the way, uh, that's how I do variety. People are like, oh, you prepare your food. You must eat the same thing all the time. Not really. I do it week by week. So this week it's a lot of chicken. It's chicken yeah. and rice and broccoli um, or asparagus. Next week uh, it may be salmon and it may be potatoes yep. or it may be quinoa or maybe something else. And I'll, so I'll do it on a week by week or maybe like, you know, half the week uh, kind of basis. Yeah. And again, it makes a, a tremendous, tremendous difference. All right, let's talk about workouts for a second. I remember as a trainer being blown away. Obviously I was a fitness fanatic real young, 14 years old. And I started working in the gyms at 18. So four years of me working out and being a fanatic, I walk into a gym and I am shocked that people would come in and I'd ask them, I used to check people in at the front desk. It was a great way to meet what people. What are you working on today? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing today? What's your work? Oh, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Like, well, I just, you know, I just kind of, you know, do what I feel like and whatever. And I get that moving is better than not moving. But I remember at that young age thinking, you know, you don't have a plan. Like you are, that's like if, if on a scale of one to 10, a 10 is like super effective workout, not having a plan knocks eight points off that. I don't care how great you are with guessing or figuring things out, you're going to get maybe a two. Now, there are some people that can get away with this a little bit, but that's, and I want to speak to this for a second, the whole intuitive eating, intuitive workout type of deal. You have to have a tremendous amount of understanding, knowledge, and awareness in order to do that properly. Otherwise, your intuition is not reliable, okay? So if I take someone off the street and tell them to intuitively work out, it's based off of their minimal knowledge about exercise. Mm -hmm. Also, also, people who intuitively work out, it's a bit of a lie. Because if you ask somebody, what are you going to do in your workout today? Well, I don't know. I work out intuitively. Well, what body parts are you training? Oh, and they'll tell you. Oh, I'm working chest, shoulders, and triceps. Or I'm going to do some pulling movements. So there is a loose structure there. It's not as intuitive. Well, as I think there. it really depends on your goal, right? So if someone, if someone comes to me and says they have a goal, then I say you have to train for the goal. Uh, if you come to me and you, and you just want to exercise, that's different, right? So there's training and there's exercise. If you, you can come in and just do random stuff and burn in calories and stay healthy and fit. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you say you have a goal, you're trying to make a change body composition wise, build muscle, burn body fat, increase mobility. You have a goal specific. You need to be training. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you coming in with no plan, you're not training. You're just exercising. Mm -hmm. So it's that simple. And it's not to demonize exercising. That's completely fine. If you're a client of mine that says, Adam, I don't want to change anything. I feel great. I'm mobile. I'm strong. I'm fit. I look good. All the things I want. I just love coming to the gym. Then by all means yeah. do, do, do Zumba. I don't give a shit. What? But if you come to me and you say, Hey, I have a goal. You want, you have fat, you want to lose. You have muscle, you want to build. You have body parts, you want to shape or change. Like then you have to be training. Well, it's the difference of being somewhat effective versus being like very effective and very effective. You have a very specific uh, plan. And so you're coming in with a plan and you're sticking with this plan and everything is kind of outlined. So that way um, you don't really have to spend a lot of wasted time yep. trying to think about this because I've I've seen this more often than not, um, just aimlessly walking around the gym and then finding uh, their their self right back where their strengths are, like always back to where it's their the strengths same thing. are, yes. and and nothing's really challenging them in a way that's stimulating growth in a different direction. That takes planning because otherwise your body is just going to trick you and it's going to pull you right back. Here, you. Look, here's the deal, okay? You you put a piano in front of me and I hit a bunch of random notes. Am I making music? It's a bunch of it's a bunch of noise. There's no rhythm. There's no music. What makes music music? 
there's a pattern of notes that work together in a sequence that creates something that's melodical, something that we listen to and we enjoy listening to and it makes sense to us. I could take a bunch of letters and throw them on a piece of paper and I, have I written a story? No, it's just a bunch of letters. It's organizing them and putting them in a way with a direction, with a goal that creates something meaningful. This is true for your morning routine. This is true for your evening routine, your food. It's especially true with your workouts. You can do a bunch of exercises, but all you're doing is a bunch of exercises. You're not, as Adam said, training your body. You're not moving in the direction that you can move. And you you nailed the the you nailed it on the head, uh, Justin. Nine out of ten times, when someone doesn't have a routine and they go to work out, they will navigate towards the stuff that they enjoy. And they end up doing the same thing over and over. Like I managed gyms for years. I know you guys did too. When you would see your regulars coming in that really didn't understand workouts, but they showed up regularly anyway, could you almost, to the letter, know exactly? Right to the Stairmaster. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he does the Stairmaster. He yeah, does the Preacher that's Curl. Thing. He does the, you know, the hamstring curl, and then he goes and he leaves. And it's the same thing every single time. Where he does a chest press, he does a machine row, and then he's out, and that's what he does every single time, right? Yeah. There's no value... Uh, to doing something, or very little, I should say, value. I don't want to say no value. It's better than sitting on the couch, but there's very, very little value to it. And there's so much you can derive from a workout in a short period of time. And again, here's what we're talking about, wasting time and being efficient. A routine that's effective will give you way more in 30 minutes than five hours of aimless exercises and random stuff. 30 minutes versus five hours. I'll, I'll, I'll bet all day long. I'll bet any amount of money on that. So it makes a tremendous difference. So how, what does your routine look like with your workout? Well, you want to plan setting up your workout. So what's my intention? Do I want to be aggressive? Do I want to be relaxed and calm? Do I want to work on mobility? Am I trying to go for PRs? Do I want? Do I need stamina and endurance? Those are all different intentions. Now, for me, purpose. You know, for me, I know I'm going to be aggressive in this workout. So I have a different kind of mentality going in, different setup, different priming, different music I even listen to to set myself up. Then you have your routine in the workout. Now, why is a workout routine so important? Because it gets you to do what you know is best for your body, not just what you feel like in the moment. When I have a routine, I'm more likely to, to do the mobility work that I always tend to avoid. I'm more likely to do unilateral work where I like to do bilateral heavy stuff all the time. I'm more likely to do the things that I know are better for my body. And then after my workout, what's my intention? Uh, well, I tend to come to work after my workout. So I'll make sure that I do a little rest and recovery, but also something that's going to wake me up a little bit so I have my cold rinse and then I come to work. But maybe it's different, you know, for you watching right now. And again, back to the whole like floating around thing, you know who can play music intuitively? Master musicians. Like I don't trust anybody who doesn't play the piano backwards, upside down and without any, you don't, I, nobody's gonna be able to play music or just create music out of nowhere unless they've somewhat become a, a, a master of it, right? So routines are extremely important. And this, is, this isn't this is the whole reason, but this is one of the reasons why you know we write workout routines and people get phenomenal results. One of them is the well-programmed. That's a, That makes a big difference. But the second is they follow a plan because without the plan, then what? They plan to fail and it doesn't really work that well. Well, we talked about this off air the other day. Um, that I Even to this day, I know that um, if I wanted to accelerate my results, right? Like, right. Like where I'm at in my life, like my, my goals are much different than what they were in my twenties. Like if I really cared about hitting increasing strength right now or hitting PRs or, uh, me building a muscle or looking a certain way, getting, reducing body fat, uh, even with all my experience, I know that following one of our programs, I'll get better results yeah. than even me off the cuff deciding what I'm going to do every single workout, even though I can do that. And I like to think that I'm a master at programming and, and working out. Like I think that I've done that for a long enough period of time that I could technically walk in the gym with no plan and still have a phenomenal workout, but I still won't have as good of a workout as if I have planned it all out. Because like you said, when I'm sitting and I'm, I'm creating space to plan this routine, I'm thinking of all the things that I haven't been doing. I'm thinking of the things that I should be doing. I'm thinking about sets and volume. I'm thinking about a lot of things that I'm not thinking about when I go, hey, I'm gonna go get a workout in right now. Uh, so even I think as even being an advanced person, it, when it comes to programming and lifting, I still think there's tremendous value, again, especially when you have a goal. 
Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm less strict or hard about this with clients when they tell me things like they're completely happy where they're at, then there's a lot of flexibility and it's not that big of a deal if we don't plan or program certain things. Whereas if you say you have goals, you're trying to make changes, yeah. then this is just another another piece of the puzzle. Well, now that we've really sold uh, the, the value of routines, I think it is important to also say that you don't want to marry routines because uh, that can also decrease the quality of your life, right? If, if you're so regimented with your morning routine and something happens, uh, let's say you have kids, okay? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Nothing will throw you off a routine like having kids. Kid wakes up, they throw up, or the baby, you know, doesn't, doesn't sleep good or whatever, uh, or someone's sick. And, and now you're so stressed out because you missed your routine, that now becomes a problem right? Or let's say you have your workout routine, but your kid's going to play their softball game and you're like stressed out. Ah, oh, I can't miss my routine. Well, now that becomes a bit of an issue. Or you're with your friends and you're hanging out and you have a really good conversation and you know you've got your meal prepped, but they're like, hey, let's go to the new restaurant down the street. Let's have a glass of wine. Let's all hang out. We haven't seen each other in a while. Well, that's, that's okay to go off the routine. So it's also important to know when to go off routines and when there's value in that. And I will say this, generally speaking, being on routines for important parts of your life, more often than not, is probably the best way to go, but not always. It's not 100%. There are definitely times when it's okay to go off. Nonetheless, establish those routines so you have something that you, you have your home base. That's and then right. you can venture out and have flexibility and enjoy life, but at least you have your home base you can always fall back to. There you have it. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 